In this video, I will give you a complex example of the new foundation models framework using both structured output and the new tools API. So you can provide extended functionality to the language model. So what we're going to build is actually very simple. The user will be able to input a number of animals and then they can say compare animals. And in the end, we will have a list of animals that is provided through the tool. And we will know how many legs each of those animals has, but this information is not provided by the tool. So this is some artificial intelligence work being done there. So we will get started by implementing the tool and this one is called find animals. So first of all, we will conform it to the tool protocol and there are four things we need to implement. We need to give this tool a name and a description. Both of these are just static strings. We can then create a arguments struct so the language model can pass arguments to the tool. And then we will implement a call arguments function that the tool can then use to generate some information. So we will start by implementing the name and let's actually make it a bit simpler. So this one will just be called find animals. And then we will also add a description and this will be find a specific number of animals. So this stepper here is basically the input parameter for our tool. Speaking of parameter, we can create a struct called arguments. And we'll have to annotate this with the generable macro just like that. Why does this have to be generable? So Apple said that uh, internally when a tool is used, foundation models uses the structured output API and structured to, to generate the arguments and structured output of course needs to be generable. So that's why this is the case. And then in here we will define a count, which is an integer and we can even give this a little guide with a description and perhaps we can say the number of animals to get. We can also specify a range here, but we already did that down here in our stepper. So we know that uh, AI will only ask for one to 10 animals. So that should be fine. So now that we have the arguments, the only thing is the actual logic that we need to implement. And it's this call arguments function that's async. You can throw arrows in here. So you can pretty much do whatever you want in here. And then in the end, you will have some tool output. And I will go through this step by step now to show you how we implement it. So first of all, we need some ground truth. And in reality, this might be a call to your database to get a list of animals or whatever their actual use case for this is. So I will just create a list of string. And let me quickly populate this with a few animals so we can save some time. All right, so now we should have 10 different animal strings. So cat, dog, mouse, monkey, snake, bird, donkey, whale, shark, and lion. And now we want to select a certain number. So our arguments.count number of random animals from this list. So this is just a, a very simple example implementation. So I will just say let result equals zero to arguments.count. And then we will map this to animals.randomElement. And let's actually compact map this. So it's actually an array of string in the end and not an array of optional strings as the map would be because random element returns an optional element of the array. So now that we have our data, how do we actually give this back to the language model? Because we can't just return result here as we need a tool output. So we will return a tool output and in here we can say generated content with properties and this is a key value pair so we will say the animal names are our result and that way we can now pass the random uh, elements of the array that we just generated here back to our language model. So that's already everything regarding the tool. Then of course we want to have structured output and I wanted to have the structure of animal name and leg count. So we will of course have to make this generable as well. And then we can 
collapse this too. And now let's have a quick look at the actual invocation of the tool and the language session. All right, so as always, we will create a session and this is a language model session, but we will have to pass, or we will have to use the tools argument here. And in here we can just pass our find animals. And of course you could also name this find animals tool, but doesn't really matter for the sake of this video, you know how to use it now. So with this API, we can pass different tools that the language model can then use in its own behalf. Okay, and then let's continue by saying result is try, uh, wait, our session dot respond to a prompt, and we will create this in a second. And we will also say generating our animal with leg count, but we want to have an array of this, so something like that. And of course, in the end, we will have to say content to get the actual array of animal with leg count. So this is pretty much the setup that we need. And now let me expand this again to two lines, and then we can have a look at how this prompt now works. So we will start with giving the model the task it needs to fulfill. So let's say compare animal count animals regarding their number of legs. So this is the task that we want them to fulfill. And now we have to also talk about which tool to use for which job. So we will say, use the find animals tool to select animals. And this way, the model now knows when to use the find animals tool. I've already prepared some result UI here. So we can just go to the preview, set number of animals to, for example, four, and then hit compare animals. And we'll have to wait a second. And there we have it, a list of four animals, and we can quickly double check this in our tool. So bird, monkey, dog, and cat. Dog, cat, monkey, and bird. All of those are parts of the array. So this way we can verify that the language model session actually used the find animals tool. 